This is a beginner friendly tutorial on how to edit a YouTube video using CapCut. And if you don't know what CapCut is, it's a free editing software that you can use for long form and short form content that you can actually download on your desktop, laptop, iPad, tablet, or even your phone. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. I have CapCut on my laptop and I'm gonna go ahead and open it up just to show you what it looks like when it first populates. But I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. This is what it looks like. It's a very simple look. So you see here at the top, there's a sign in option. There's a join pro option. Everything that I need is in the free version. So I've never upgraded to pro. We're gonna go ahead and click on new project. And then you'll see an editing screen populate here. If you're familiar with any editing tools at all, you know that it generally kind of looks like this. You have your library, which will be on the left hand side. You have the video display, which will be in the center. You have settings and details, which will be on the right hand side. And then you have your editing timeline, which is going to be at the bottom. Now I'm not going to edit like a full on video with motion graphics and stuff like that. I'll give you tips on how to edit your video using just general guidelines. So I'm going to go ahead and click on import on the left hand side and when you select that you're able to go to any drive that you utilize or a folder that you utilize um, where you have dropped your videos so you're going to select the videos that you need and then you can click on import whatever video you're going to edit you're going to go ahead and click and drag it down to your timeline and then drop it in your raw video, you want to cut out all the extra fluff. It's important to think of the viewer and your audience and what they want to see and not what you want to put in your video. I know you have so much you want to say about your certain niche or specific topic, but if your viewer is not interested in everything you have to say, then it's going to make it harder for your metrics to be the best that it can be because your viewers are clicking off of your video. Keep your raw footage to a point where you're thinking about how am I serving my audience? Um, so as I'm editing, this is too small. I'm not able to really get in there and see second by second what I can edit out. In the right hand side of your timeline, there is a magnifying glass, which you can click on to enlarge the video file. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it probably this big. One key point is if you look at the timeline at the bottom of your video, you can see where you're speaking or where there's noise versus when there's silence. So what I typically do is I will go in and then I will cut out all of the silence. I'm gonna click on this part right here of my video cause that's when I start talking. And then as you can see right here, there's a split option. Select the part you want to cut, hit the split button, select the part of the video that's silent, and then hit the backspace on your keyboard. So then we're gonna go through the whole video and then we're going to just split things up and delete it. Now that we've cut out all of the dead air in the video, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of skim through and see if we can visually see anything that we don't want in the video. And what you can do instead of clicking around to see if you can find anything that's visually not supposed to be there in your video, you can select this button right here. It looks like a rectangle with a line straight down the middle. If you click on this, you're able to basically preview the whole thing without playing it and without clicking on anything. So let's say I edit all of that out. Now, let's say we're going in and we're watching the video and we notice this is part that we accidentally cut out. What you can do is just simply select the video. You want to bring your mouse to either end of the video and then you're gonna see that the icon has changed. So you're gonna go ahead and click and then drag it out and then you can see the parts that you have basically deleted. This is good for just like small adjustments where you've missed something and you wanna bring it back in. So now we've cut down all of the silence and we've cut out everything that we don't want in the video visually. So now what you're gonna do at this point is you're gonna watch through your entire video and if there's any parts that you need to cut out, that's when you're gonna go ahead and start spot deleting things. What's really important about chopping up your video and deleting a bunch of clips is that you're making it as tiny as possible. You wanna keep your audience as engaged as possible throughout the entire video and you want to make it an experience for them so let's say we've edited the entire video the next part is to basically add music over your video now this is optional um, you don't have to do it but sometimes it helps with keeping the pace up in the video you want to make sure that first of all it's royalty free and that you're not going to get copy striked on your video what I would recommend to do is invest in a platform that gives you rights to have music in your videos what I highly recommend to invest in is Envato Elements 
Productions. And Vato Elements is an online platform that gives you a license to have music in your YouTube videos, stock video options, video templates, music, sound effects. There's also presentation templates. There's photo options, fonts, graphics. There's so many different options of different things that you can utilize and you get unlimited downloads. And this video is not sponsored. This is just a tool that I use that I feel brings out so much character in my videos. If you would like to sign up for it, I do have a link down in the description below. Also, if you're finding value with this video so far, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button down below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop one of the songs that I downloaded from Envato. And then once it's in your library, you can go ahead and click and drag and drop the file. You can drag and drop it right underneath your video timeline. And then as you can see here, the music doesn't start till right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to split that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and delete the silent part. You can see that the audio here, there's a lot of orange and red peaks in it. And that's not good because you don't want your audio to be too loud, let alone you don't want the music to be louder than you. So what I would do is I would bring it down a ton of notches. I want to make sure that my voice and what I'm saying stands out. I would recommend to just watch it a little bit to hear how it sounds and then adjust it accordingly. And I actually want to see what your video is going to look like. So I want you to. So then I'm just going to spot check random parts of the video Put together and see how our final video looks. And so at the beginning, I'll cut and we'll go ahead and do that. It does sound a little bit too loud, the music. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring it down some more and then re-listen and do that. I actually want to see what your video is going to look like. So I think that sounds fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and do another spot check in a different part of the video today and then click on this video on the screen. So I think that sounds fine. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is. If your audio is too short compared to your video, all you're going to do is add in the audio again and then just make sure it's the same uh, volume. So now that we have our video all cut up and edited, now that we have our audio in there, we're going to go ahead and add stock videos or b-roll so stock videos as mentioned before um, you can download from envato elements so you're going to click on stock video and then whatever you like you can go ahead and download and again you get unlimited downloads with envato elements which is why i feel like it's such a great deal just for about a little less than 17 dollars a month um, so let's say i got all my stock video and i want to go ahead and add it in I'm going to go to my folder and I'm going to find where my stock videos are. So let's say I want these. I'm going to click drag and drop them. They're going to load up and then you can see that it populated here in the left hand side. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it above my video. What I would recommend to do is to shorten your stock video. Um, and if you want multiple stock video within like 15 seconds then you can shorten it to five seconds each and then you can see here that my stock footage is too small for the frame so what you're going to do you're going to select that video and then you're going to go ahead and click and drag the corners out so that it fits the frame what i would recommend to do is to record yourself maybe two days a month just to spend the entire day recording b-roll doing different things having a meeting going out to lunch having coffee with your friends on the phone typing on your laptop going to bed waking up your skincare routine whatever your niche is just get as much b-roll as possible you can do the most basic things in your daily routine and just record yourself doing it that way if you're talking about this stuff and maybe you're telling a story or you have a major key point in your video you want to have that b-roll that makes it more interesting especially if it's yourself in the b-roll so now what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and add titles select wherever you want text to be overlaid in your video and then you can either click the plus sign on default text or you can click drag and drop it down um, you want to shorten it or make it as long as you need it to be you're going to select the text and then you're going to edit what the text says in the right hand side what I like about CapCut is it has so many different font options for you to choose from, and it has fonts that I think are more appealing than other video editors. And then I can change the size here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and change the font, and then you can also change the color of it. You wanna make sure that the text is easy to read. You can also 
add different styles, which I think helps with making it easier to read. So you can add as much text as you want. You can shorten it, you can make it longer, you can customize how it looks. And not only can you add text to your video, you can also add in auto captions. So how to do auto captions is on the left hand side, you can select auto captions. You're going to select the language you want to auto populate, and then you're going to go ahead and click on create. So what this does is instead of you writing in captions to your video line by line, all you have to do is select auto captions. It will auto populate it and then you can edit it as you need to. So there's stickers. There's stickers that you can add on here instead of having to go to like Canva and creating one, then downloading it and bringing it into CapCut. Um, if you want to add effects to your video, you're, you have that option. We also have transitions. So transitions also adds in a very creative touch to your video. So what you can do is let's say we like this transition here. We're going to download it. And then what you can do is you're going to go ahead and click drag and then drop it right in between whatever clip you want it to be in. So let's say we've edited our entire video um, to completion and we want to go ahead and export it. So we're going to go ahead and click export in the top right hand corner. We're going to go ahead and title it whatever we want it to be. You're going to save it wherever you want it to be by clicking on the folder here. I'm going to do it to my desktop and then whatever you filmed your video on. So if you did it on 1080 HD um, at 30 frames per second, or if you did it at 4K for 60 frames per second, you want to make sure that the resolution is the same. So I have recorded mine on 4K. I'm going to go ahead and change this from 1080p to 4K. And then I'm going to make sure that everything is the same. So codec, you can leave it at H.264. You want it to be, um, I, I personally keep that MOV. And then my frame rates, I did at 60 frames per second. And everything else looks good. I'm going to go ahead and click on export. And what I would recommend to do before you export is to watch the video through just to make sure you've made all the edits you needed. And then after it exports, go ahead and watch it again. And what I recommend to do is if you have friends or family who are able to help you out in this, at this part of your process, I would send it to someone and ask them to watch it through just to make sure and get a second pair of eyes to see if there's any hiccups in your video or any edits that seem off, or if in general, your video just doesn't keep their attention the entire time. That's what the process looks like. From here, all you have to do now is publish it or schedule it in. And then what you're going to do next is you're going to click on this video here and I'll see you there. Bye.